What? Why am I at Toman? Ow, why have I been operated on? Guess I better go play some sick guitars. <laughs> you got like a plate of meat as a, as a, as a hand. <laughs> yeah. Salutations, everybody in the entire world watching this video. I am Rob Chapman. And I'm Andy, and we're here at Toman. Yes, we are here at Toman. I don't know how I appeared here. Magically, through a, a hole in time and space. Well, I just kind of woke up from having been operated on and crawled out of this little riverbed and then found myself in one of the biggest guitar stores in Europe. And that's how we do it in Germany. <laughs> and then I thought, you know what I've never done? What's that? Many things <laughs> that are incredibly inappropriate. How long is this video going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Item one. I've never eaten cheese backwards. Uh, I've never tried a Heritage guitar. And do you know much about Heritage? I know a little bit, but uh, school me, Rob, school me. Well, in the 1800s, a gentleman called Orville Gibson, who you may have heard on, heard on? <laughs> you may have heard of, <laughs> went to Kalamazoo in America and started a company called Gibson, initially making uh, mandolins and then progressively turned... And womandolins. And womandolins. <laughs> and then it became the holy shrine we call the Lester Paul. And what happened then is if you go forward in time, like a timeline of video, uh, some former employees from the original Gibson factory, bought a chunk of that factory and started a company called Heritage. So Heritage is a relatively new guitar company mm. with the original employees from the Gibson Kalamazoo factory in the original Gibson factory. It's a little bit like, is this the real Gibson now or is this the real, who's, who's the real who's Gibson, who? please stand up. Uh, and I thought, I've never tried one. They make, a, they make a bold claim. Right. And they've got a lot of, I mean, must be some of the most experienced luthiers on this planet making this type of guitar shape. So I thought I should definitely try one. And then I had a bit of a dilemma. Tell me. I'll tell you about my dilemma. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face working with Andy. Um, so this guitar retails for 2,600 euro wooden ingots of the realm. Okay. And I thought, well, that's a lot more than a Gibson standard, but it's a lot less than a custom shop. Mm -hmm. But I want to play a custom mm -hmm. shop. So, <laughs> so this is a custom shop Gibson. Do you know how much this costs? No, how much is this one? I think it was about five and a half thousand euros. It's about double the price. It's double the price. But my question is, is it double the guitar? <laughs> so I thought, I can't, I've come up with a great excuse to just go and try and play about 8K worth of, uh, of single cut type guitars in that room over there. Let's, uh, let's do it if I, if I click my fingers with you simultaneously. But what we'll do is we'll close our eyes yeah. and see if we can guess when we're going to click. Ready? Oh! That's pretty close. It was great. <laughs>
and we're back in the room. So that was a tremendously interesting experience. Really? Yes. So you played 8Ks worth of guitar? I played 8Ks worth of single cut. I am already scarred here, but now I am scarred here. Mate. Because when I sat down and played this guitar, I wanted to take it home and think of a hundred excuses to tell my wife. We've all been there. I've been there recently, man. Yes. I've got some leftovers, you can have them if you want. <laughs> I'm now feeling slightly worried because the last time I came to Toman and fell in love with the guitar, you bought it. Oh no! You did. I did. Yes, it you did. It was the Telecaster, Yes, right? it was the Telecaster. And it's now my Telecaster. Yes, it's now your Telecaster. So how long is it going to take me to buy this one? <laughs> So I'm now worried about telling Andy about this guitar. This is the best Les Paul I've ever played in my life. I'm going to say this is the best Gibson I've ever played, full stop, and this is the best Les Paul I've ever played. Is it both? It ticks both boxes. It's... I, I, was, you, I, was, I walked away when you tested them, so I didn't hear what you played. I think it was I better that allowed. you didn't hear what I played, because if you'd heard the magical myriad of, of tones yeah. from this guitar, your wallet would fly out of your pocket, hit someone in the face. Probably you. Like that, yeah. and then you'd be making a purchase decision. What's the Heritage. The Heritage. Now, let me just start by saying we weighed these guitars. Andy has quite large arms. It's the, it's the yoga. It's also because he's so tall. Uh, we, we call it yoga, sorry. Things are much further down for him. So when he picks them up, he's got to pick them up much further. It's gravity. So there's more gravity yeah. for Andy to work through with his, with his bicep situation. Fingers, say. fingers okay there? They're, they're good there, yeah. Okay, okay. So, but when you picked up the heritage, what did you say? I said some words that went like, oh my goodness. I think that's what he said. He went, Yeah, it was the old man noise. So it's a heavy guitar, so heavy in fact, that I asked my friend Chris to weigh it. And it was 4.7 kilograms. And then we weighed that one, and it was a lot lighter. I mean, considerably lighter. I can't remember how much. 3.7, wasn't it? 3.7, something like that. 1.7, it was just a lighter weight. Where's Chris? Chris? You can ask him. What? How, How much, much did that one weigh? That one. You, you immediately guessed. 3.7 or 3.7? 3.7. 3.7, yeah. yeah, so, well this was 4.6, this was 3.7. Yeah. Everybody has a superpower. Chris's superpower, as it turns out, is immediately guessing the weight of a Les Paul or a single cut and then going, and then that's what it was. Yeah, but it only works on guitars. Uh, could you just say, <laughs> could you, you say hello to, to the audience? Let's go. Hello, audience. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this heritage, Yes. Felt really good, sounded really good, played really good. There's a butt coming, isn't there? There is a butt coming. Is it yours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it played about half as good and sounded about half as good as this guitar. But here's my dilemma. It's half the cost of this guitar. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd kind of expect it to have that kind of paradigm. I think if you wanted something that was an alternative to a Gibson, Mm -hmm. that was as close to a Gibson as you will ever find, made in the original Sorry. factory by the, by the original staff, then probably this is the guitar that you would, you would need. Did you cherry pick this? <laughs> because it's a cherry burst. <laughs> no, is it? Yes, Such it is. a bad land. Uh, which means that I've been Rob Chapman. I've been Andy. Bye. <laughs> you don't have to leave just because the video is done. Could you adjust the microchip in my oh, head? Yeah, please. The, uh, the Toman. Okay. Put it in German mode.